Okay, we have another integral today from the Florida Integration B 2016, problem 14. We have the integral from zero to 10 of the ceiling function of the sine of the floor of x dx. Okay, now this doesn't look too bad. We've got the floor and the ceiling in the same problem. This inside part, the floor of x, now we can break up our integral on integers, like we can go from zero to one, one to two, and this floor function is going to just round us down to the lower bound. So like when we, if you were just integrating, say, from three to four, let's say, and this was the whole integral, then within these bounds, this is always going to round down to the next highest integer or the lower bound. So this is going to become just the integral of three. So in this case, it just transforms the integral into a constant value. And the floor and the ceiling is always going to return an integer value. But with the sign, it's gonna get a little more complicated. So to get this started anyway, let's actually start breaking it up on these integer bounds. So like for the first one, going from zero to one, we're gonna have the ceiling. This is gonna to transform to the lower bounds. This is gonna become just sine of zero. And then for the next one, let's just get a feel for it. So this one's going one to two. We have the ceiling of sine and the floor is gonna round and the floor is gonna round us down to this lower bound, so it's just gonna become sine of one. Then I think I'll do one more here. So we're going from two to three. At least we're not going to infinity, so I can stop writing in a minute. So this is gonna be um, ceiling of sine of two. And then eventually, let's see our last one, we're gonna be going from nine to 10 of the ceiling of sine of nine. Now, one thing that's nice about breaking up the floor of the ceiling function is, again, every one of these values, we don't know what it is quite yet, but each of these values is just gonna be some constant value that can come outside of the integral. So the way we have this set up is we're integrating, we'll call our lower bound some integer n, the upper bound is always separated by one, n plus one, and for now let's just call this some constant. When you integrate this, it's just like integrating one, you have cx and we're going from n to n plus one, but when you plug that in and evaluate, you got n plus one minus n, the n's cancel, the integral in fact just turns into a one for the whole thing, and so it just returns the C. So in each of these integrals, the constant value is gonna be just this expression right here. And so basically what we can do here is just erase the integral from each of these and just sum up all of these constants, just the ceiling function of sine from zero to nine. Okay, now to go ahead and evaluate this, it's not too bad, we just have 10 terms. We could actually probably just go ahead and do all 10 terms and it wouldn't take that long. But let's just see if we can understand what's happening using the unit circle over here. And let's just start at zero. So sine of zero, that's gonna just be zero, so there's really not anything to look at there. The ceiling is not gonna be able to round this up because it's gonna be an exact zero, so there's no rounding going on, it's just gonna stay. When you input an integer value into the ceiling, it's just gonna return the same integer value. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just get rid of this zero term as we know that's zero, and I can just start this at one. And now sometimes when you have sine or cosine inside the floor or ceiling, they'll put a pi on it to simplify it. We don't have that here. This is just gonna be like, for the next term, we're just evaluating sine of one. Now, like, Pi over two is 1.57, so we don't have to be very precise, but sine of one is gonna be somewhere in this region. We know at sine pi over two, this value is gonna be one. So everything in these first two quadrants here is gonna get rounded up to one. So for our n equals one value, this is just gonna round up to one. Then for our two value, that's gonna be about the same way. It's gonna be somewhere in this region. The second quadrant, again, that's gonna get rounded up to one. And then even for three, it's getting close to this pi value here, 3.14. So we'll put it right there, but it's still just getting rounded up to one. And then for n equal four, that's gonna be somewhere down here in the third quadrant. The ceiling in this region is gonna round us up to zero, right? Because all these values are gonna be between minus one and zero. So those are all gonna get rounded up just to zero. So that's gonna be a zero right there. And so really in order to move this along, rather than going through each value, we just need to know what quadrants they're gonna fall into. Everything in quadrants one and two is gonna get rounded up to one. Everything in quadrants three and four is gonna get rounded to zero. And so we really just need to know these cutoff points. Pi is 3.14, then our next one's gonna be at two pi, which is around 6.28. These are approximate values. And then last one, three pi is gonna be 9.42. We're not gonna really need to worry about four pi. We barely need to worry about three pi because nine is not gonna quite reach that. So then we have all of our values in quadrants one and two, that's already done. Then going to the next one, quadrants two and three, we already did four, so that was a zero. Then we're gonna have another one. Let's see, the cutoff is 6.28, so all the way to six. So we're gonna have four, five, and six is all gonna be zeros. 
So that's gonna be like our quadrants two and three. And then we're back into quadrants one and two for our n equals seven value. n equals seven is gonna be past 6.28, so it's gonna be somewhere in here. So n equals seven is gonna be one. n equals eight is gonna be one. <laughs> n equals 8 is going to be 1. And then for n equals 9, that's going to be somewhere close to 3 pi, but it's going to be somewhere in here for our 9. That, again, is getting rounded up to 1. So all we need to do is just add everything up. And so for my solution of this, we just have 6. Okay, there it is. Pretty easy example with the floor and ceiling functions. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good day.